Okay, so it's been a while and I think this is due for an update. So I'm going to show you guys how to download, install, and get multi-instance working with my macro. And also a little bit of an extension will also show how to get the wall working if you want to do that as well. So I'll have timestamps in the description if you want to skip ahead if you've already done half of this or something like that. Uh, but how we're going to start this is by going to my GitHub and downloading the setup script. Okay, this is what you need uh, as a basis for all of the macros. So here's the multi-instance setup script. You only have to run this script once. So I'm just going to leave it on my desktop for right now. The second thing you want to do is you want to get multi-MC. I would strongly, strongly, strongly recommend multi-MC. You can use the default vanilla launcher, but it's just worse in literally every single way. So don't do that. Uh, and now you want to make your instances. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy one of the instances I already have and uh, show you guys how to do it. Now, the main thing you want to take into consideration here is that you don't want there to be spaces in your name. So you can name it literally anything you want. Just don't have spaces. It doesn't like spaces for some reason. Okay, I'm back. Hi. So also, if you have spaces anywhere in your folder structure, like maybe your name is, I don't know, Mr. Dude, and you have like a space in there in the middle of the, you know, okay. What you want to do is go straight onto your C drive. So the username is like down like C slash user slash username. Just go back, go back, put it right on your C drive. Nothing wrong with that. And that way you'll have no spaces whatsoever. Just as a default, don't reformat your hard drive or whatever everybody did. <laughs> okay, so now that we have our instances, what we need to do is we need to just start them up. Okay, now that your four Minecrafts are open, what you're gonna want to do is order them in the front of your taskbar in the order that you want. So this is, for example, instance one, so I'm gonna put it there. This one's instance two, I'll put it here. Three here, four here. Okay, cool, good stuff. Now, here's the multi-reset setup script. You're gonna to wanna to double click it, and it should go one, two, three, four, and then say like done, okay? Now, what we're gonna to wanna to do is go in here, and I'm just gonna check one. It only matters if you check one, because you wanna make sure that it does it. If it does it in one, it'll do it in all. What you want to do in here is you want to check, is there an instance number.txt? This should be created by the setup script. So double check it, make sure it says one in it. If this file's not here, all you have to do is create a text file called instance number.txt and put a one in it or whatever number instance it is. If for some reason it doesn't work. Okay, and that's the only time you have to run this setup script. You never have to run it again. So just delete it, get it out of here. I don't want to see it. Next, let's download our multi uh, reset RSG. So here we go. All right, you should download it. It's literally just going to be one file. So uh, let's do that. Now we're going to open it. Uh, we can open it in Notepad, whatever program you want. And we're going to go through some of the variables, okay? Instance freezing, what is this? It is basically a way of improving your performance by temporarily crashing your instances that you're not playing. This is going to help dramatically with your performance it could cause the macro to break every once in a while. Also, as an alternative, you could turn this off and then turn on Dynamic FPS, which is a mod linked in the description. And what that does is it lowers your FPS limit to zero or, well, not zero, but very low so that it takes up almost, well, a lot less resources. It's not as good as instance freezing, but the macro will never crash with Dynamic FPS. So weigh your options, pick your poison. Okay, so next is unpause on switch. So that means when you reset an instance, go to the next one. It usually stays on the pause screen for a few seconds. Well, until you unpause. But if you set this to true, it'll automatically unpause, take it to the next world. Full screen, self-explanatory. Do you want full screen? Disable TTS. So there's a TTS. Every time you reload the macro, it'll say ready. So if you want that to not say ready, you can just turn it to true. Count attempts, this will just create a text file in the same folder as the macro that just increments every time you reset. Auto reset, this is a really old feature. Back in the day, we had to reset worlds if they were idle for more than five minutes. Just leave this false before freeze delay. So when using instance freezing, what happens is it will delay a little bit before the instance freezes. The reason you do this is because 
Minecraft, when you load in a world, initially there's like a lot of white. You don't really see a lot going on. So if you want to see what's going on in the world for background resetting purposes, then you want a little bit of a before freeze delay. Full screen delay. Uh, if you've ever pressed the F11 button in Minecraft before, you know that full screening can take some time and it can be a little bit wonky. So you just want to make sure that it's done being full screened or unfull screened by the time you, the macro is doing stuff. So this might need to be increased or decreased depending on your situation. Restart delay. If, if, it's, if the macro is glitchy, increase it, but it should be fine. Max loops. So if the macro locks a lot, like, you know, you can't press any buttons, usually increasing max loops would help that. And finally, OBS delay is something that you increase if it's not switching scenes for you automatically, which it should do. Now, those are all the variables you need to configure, but there's a little bit more. If you scroll down to the very bottom, these are all your hotkeys, okay? So for me, I have U, exit the world. Uh, that's the default. O is reset the background instance one. P, open, open square bracket. You know, these are all your background resetting buttons. If you don't want a background reset, you don't have to. Uh, if you have more instances, you just copy this uh, and then change the hotkey. And yeah, if you want to change the hotkey at all, like say you want K to be your reset key, just change that to be K. You know what I mean? Okay, now we're done editing that. What we want to do is open up these worlds and we're going to go into a world in all of them. So you're going to start by pressing the gold boots. The reason I like doing this is because first world lag can cause some weird issues. So make sure that you go into the world before starting the macro. Okay, now we're going to run the macro. It should rename all of your titles here. How it says instance one, two, three, four, and then it'll say ready. Now at this point, do not touch anything in the game. Look, see this title up here? This is important. If I click any button, it'll go away. And if that happens, that's fine. You just have to restart the macro. And that's important because now we're going to start working with OBS, okay? So what we're going to want to do is start a new scene collection. I'm just going to call it testing, okay? And here's our scene. Now, we're going to want one scene for every instance of Minecraft, okay? So how does this work? You're going to go right click, add window capture. So if you're using full screen, you want to use a game capture. If you're using windowed, then you want to use a window capture. So I'm just going to call this MC1, create new. Now you're going to want to make sure this says Minecraft instance one. And then down here, you want to say match title, otherwise find window of the same type. Okay, awesome. Now we're going to want to duplicate this, call it instance two, and you're going to continue this uh, for all your instances. So I have four instances, I make four scenes. Now how multi-instancing works is you need to be recording your other instances at the same time. You can achieve this in one of two ways. You can either have instances like here, maybe little window captures, or what you can do is something like this. So you have another scene, we'll call it verification. And here you're going to add four window captures right here just like this and you know make it look a little bit prettier whatever this is just a test so you want to have these open at all times now this is the kicker okay because you can't be recording multiple scenes at once right well okay so just download this and install it you can i don't know maybe follow this tutorial or something i don't know very easy to do and then you're going to want to right click this filters add a filter source record Okay, and then record mode, and then I would do it when recording. So every time you press the record button, it's gonna start recording this instance as well. Then you can change, you can fiddle with all the things, you know, the bit rate, blah, 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 whatever. Okay, and now that's great now, but we need to add some hotkeys to switch between these instances, right? So what you wanna do is you wanna go into your settings here, your hotkeys, and now you wanna go down and find instance one, Switch to scene, you want to set that to be numpad one. Instance two, numpad two, three, three, four, four. Cool, got it, epic. Now you should be good to go. So our macro's on and we want to start resetting, right? So we play our seed, we want to click reset, so we press the U button and it'll take us right to the next one. U to the next, U to the next, U to the next, and there you go. It is really that simple. You've set up multi-instance. Okay, now this is cool and all, uh, you know, resetting is fun, but, you know, 
you definitely want to get going on the wall. If you have the resources, I would recommend you need to be able to run at least six instances to really get the juice. But if you could do that, very nice. I'm going to show you how to do that. So the first thing you're going to want to do is download the wall macro. So here it is. Uh, it'll be linked in the description. You go here, click releases. And this is the latest one, 0.3.1. I don't know what it is right now because I don't know when you're watching this. There you go. Download the wall, drag it here. Now for the wall, we have a few more options, okay? Because the wall is a little bit more involved. So we have our rows and our columns. So I'm running, you can see my beautiful wall over here has um, two rows and two columns. So we're gonna run two rows, two columns. For our performance method, you have two options. Well, three really. Instance freezing, which we talked about over there, or settings changing. So you could use instance freezing, that's good, but macro might crash for you once in a while. So an alternative is settings changing. I would strongly recommend doing settings changing because it's much more fast than instance freezing and it has a lot less bugs. For settings changing, you're just needing to use the dynamic FPS mod uh, as an additional thing. There's also nothing. If you don't want to do settings changes, you can also just not do them. So, I mean, it's up to you. Affinity. Now, affinity is pretty big. This is a super convoluted thing. You don't really need to worry about it. All you need to know is that it's going to increase your performance, um, especially when all of your other instances are resetting wide resets. Now what this does is it makes your Minecraft window really wide when resetting on the wall. That's important because it'll give you a larger field of view. So you'll see more while you're resetting on the wall, which is very important because you only get one frame. Full screen again, disable TTS again, you know this. Reset sounds. This was a very highly requested thing. So whenever you click the reset button on the wall, it'll make a reset noise. Lock sounds similar, uh, except using a lock feature, which I'll talk about later. Count attempts, again, you know that. Down here, we get some more advanced settings. Resume delay, this is related to instance freezing. So if, if sometimes you have to reset something twice for it to actually reset, try increasing this, it might do something. Max loops, we talked about this earlier. Before is it freeze delay, we talked about this earlier as well. Before pause delay, now this is important when you're using dynamic FPS because Without it, if you pause right away, you'll be looking at some white screen for like a second or two. It's not good. So you want this to be, I, th I like 500, but you can fiddle around with it. If you're looking at white, increase it. If you feel like it's not being, it's being paused for, or unpaused for too long, try decreasing it. It's up to you. Full screen delay. Again, we know this. Restart delay. We talked about this earlier. Script boot delay. So every time you rerun the script, it's going to unfreeze all your instances if you're using instance freezing. So sometimes that can cause glitches if we don't wait long enough. So increase this if you're seeing weird stuff towards the beginning of a session. OBS delay, again, we talked about this before. Settings delay, you shouldn't have to increase this, but if your settings aren't changing consistently, you might want to increase it a little bit. Low bit mask multiplier. Now this is really dank, okay? But this is for affinity. Uh, if you're lagging too much, you might want to increase it or decrease it. You want to find kind of a happy medium, but don't go above one. I would say don't go low, go below 0 0.5. Now this is important if you want settings changes. So every time you reset, it will automatically reset your render distance, FOV and sensitivity, unless you set these to be zero. If you don't want settings changes, that's fine. Just set these to be zero and they will not do anything. But if you do want to reset your settings every time, put your render distance here, your FOV here and your mouse sensitivity here. Low render is important if you're using the settings changing RD method. What that'll do is that every time you leave a world, it will set your render distance to what you set it here. So in this case, five. Okay, now let's scroll down to the bottom again because there's actually a lot of hotkeys with this. We'll start here, exit world, I have it you. You can change it whatever you want. E, so on the wall, you reset with the E button. You, you play an instance with the R button. You focus reset, which means you play one and reset everything else with F and T will reset everything. Okay. Another feature, if you press shift and left click on an instance on the wall, then 
it will lock it, meaning that uh, if you do something like a reset all, it'll reset everything except for the instance you locked. Now, this isn't really important unless you have like 15 instances or some crazy number of instances. So I wouldn't worry about it too much unless you are one of those people. Then here are the reset keys. So I have it be default one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. These are terrible keys. I would strongly suggest finding something that you're used to. Like personally, I use Q, W, E, A, S, D, Z, X, C, because that's where my left hand lies. So that's kind of what I like using. And then here is uh, the keys to switch into an instance, which is the same thing, but holding shift. Okay, and we're done configuring the wall. Okay, we're gonna double click the wall. And now everything is wide because we have the wide reset feature on. Speaking of wide, we'll make OBS wide as well. Why not? So now on OBS, you have to do a little bit extra setup here. So if you go into settings, hotkeys, and then your verification, you want to set this to be F12. All right. So now what you want to do is you want to right click your verification. And you want to click full screen projector preview. Now you can click this here. Another thing that you could do is go here and go full screen projector and then click this. And this is what you're going to look at. This is the wall. Okay, this looks insanely dank. Okay, yours is going to look prettier than this, I promise. Okay, listen. But here's what you do. Normally you have instances in like a grid pattern, right? So we'll say this quadrant is instance one, two, three, and four. So if you hover over this and you press the, the E button, it'll reset it. This one will reset it. This one will reset it. This one will reset it. Cool. This one looks pretty good. Let's play it. And there you go. You've got the wall set up. Really not that hard, especially if you already have multi-instance set up. It's just understanding the variables and that's really it after that. So if you have a question, the best way of getting it answered is by joining my Discord because we have a tech support channel with a lot of people. You can ping the tech support role and a multitude of people will come and help you out as soon as they can. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate you guys and enjoy resetting. Smile.